recording. Okay, hi, we are live. Welcome to the I Am A Professional, I Swear podcast. Today I am joined by, how do you say it, Covius? I know you as crypto, but Covius? Is that? Covius. Covius, Covius. okay, Covius. Uh, me and him go back a long time, really long time. We were both part of the same organization. We both got kicked out of Canada. Um, I, I know I reference these stories a lot throughout, but uh, yeah, we've gone through so many shenanigans and then... I moved to Texas, you were in Ohio, we went our separate ways, and then I was like, hey, come on to my podcast, because you said, like, I'm in the next one, and I'm like, fuck yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, uh, also, for those uh, of you who have seen the last podcast, yes, this is being recorded on the same day, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, uh, first, first off, um, sir, is that a bomb? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I didn't have to get a cavity search for you. <laughs> uh, let's, start, uh, let's start with that. So, how does the timeline work? We, you, you tell us. My, my memory is a little, a little fuzzy there. So I was in Washington. Um, we were a part of an organization set to destroy X. They reached out to us, said, "Hey." You know, our streaming house is failing. We need heroes to come in and manage. <laughs> so, is an understatement. <laughs> uh, I think you were being pulled for YouTube management, and I was being pulled for Twitch management. Um, uh, at the time, I did not have a vehicle, so I decided to meet you down in, I don't know what town it was. I always space out on the, it was the Marcos? San Marcos, yeah. San Marcos, okay. So I'm all the way up in Seattle. We decide to, you know, I take a 20 hour road trip all the way down to San Marcos, get in the car with you, load everything up. And we just drive straight over to San Antonio. You know, your typical stops along the ways, you know, go, 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 go. another one. <laughs> um, plenty of stories. Uh, we stopped in van. I think it was, uh, it was, it had to have been like, was it? Where? Uh, where we was? set up the bed oh no that was um that was van yeah it was right before uh san antonio i can't remember uh, to be honest. I, mean, I just remember being woken up by a sprinkler and <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, well i it was van something right before it was like two hours before san antonio decided to finally take a rest after 40 hours of being up straight and uh uh, we we set up this beautiful bed. <laughs> so it was, it was, yeah, there's a little picture right there. <laughs> it was a beautiful, beautiful bed, uh, and we were interrupted. Like we we had stripped down to our boxers and everything. We I mean we we went full full no homo on this one, okay? But we 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 might have had a little cuddle here. And there. <laughs> um, it was cold. <laughs> it, really was. it had to have been like two three o'clock in the morning and this guy comes up and he just agua 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 agua, agua, agua. me and Wolf are looking at each other like what what's going on <laughs> you know what and sure enough all you see in the ground is pink sprinklers sprinklers yep. everywhere we jump up grab our beds run off to the side and get off to the side i'm like ah my shoes <laughs> <laughs> and they were just uh, getting sprayed and all i remember is thinking is i don't know how to fix this situation <laughs> so i'm just gonna we we knocked right back out <laughs> we, we, we passed back out i think the craziest part about this is we went to we went to sleep in an absolutely dead rest stop we woke up to the busiest rest stop i have ever seen trucks everywhere cars everywhere Families everywhere. The first, the first thing was like, well, you know how many Snapchat stories we were on this morning. <laughs> uh, it's like that. I don't know. I, I think there was a movie where he just kind of wakes up in the middle of downtown somewhere, and there's just people walking around. That that was us. There was people. Yeah, exactly, right dude. Us, looking at us, and we're just like. <laughs> and the thought process Man. is, fuck, we're, we're, we're in our boxers. Like, <laughs> there's families walking around. What do we do? <laughs> Scott up, look, he just put on my jeans. The dog's up in the window like, guys? Guys, there's so many people. <laughs> that rear was awake for like uh, a few hours at that point. That was great. Uh, and, then, and then we... 
It was San Antonio. It was something San Antonio. Pixie picked up Fenrir. Uh, for some reason, we decided to go through Detroit to get to Canada. Yeah. I, so on our way up, I think it was a shorter path. Because the other one was going to be told. There was a, a toll on the path or something like that. But we decided to go through Detroit. Needless to say, if you, well, the first the first time we passed through, they didn't tell us why we were denied. They were just like, hey, you're you're, you're denied. You guys are moving here. You guys are moving here. Uh, uh, I mean, it's half right. But... <laughs> well, it's only a six-month contract. Uh, yeah. And then uh, the this. Like we got denied the first night out, so we stayed in a hotel. Um, and then we we attempted to go back through. My, but mind you, Detroit was one of the scariest places I have ever. Been. Wolfie decided to park across from a Seven Eleven in downtown Detroit with the windows down, and leaving me in the car. And this man starts walking over to Seven Eleven. I'm like, hey. You rocked the windows? <laughs> I didn't have a care in the world. I was like, this is like in so many places I've lived, the same thing. I didn't even have a care in the world. And although, Thousands of dollars of equipment in the vehicle. I'm like, well, this is this is the end of crypto. This is, this I'm is dead. It's gone. <laughs> but like, during the day, like when we went to the library and everything, like Detroit's a beautiful city. Like I'm not going to lie. It was a really beautiful city during the day. Mm -hmm. When we actually got to see it. Uh, and then, what? Well, so we got kicked out of Canada because they didn't believe that we were only going to be there for temporarily uh also we didn't have any paperwork we just our passports and that's about it um yeah. i don't even think i had a passport no i had an id right you had you had a you had some kind of slip of paper that was that was proven it like you were you were valid to enter canada yeah. um although now i have a red flag on my account so every time if i yeah. want to go back it's gonna be a hassle yeah it's a thumb up the butt um so the second time we go through um uh, the first time was when the whole bomb incident happened and they pulled out and that's I to this day I still think it was the higher officer messing with the new guy because he was obviously a new guy but he pulls off this you know I'll, I'll tell it I'll tell it. so Pixie and I had a, a set of toys so we could you know mm -hmm. uh, while I was away and their Wi-Fi so obviously mine was a big tube with you know a lot of electronics on one end so apparently they're searching our stuff and they took it apart, but he took it off the wrong end and it destroyed electronics. So he walks in and I'm sitting there with crypto and I think I'm filling out some sort of paperwork. And he's like, Who's the owner of the gold Honda? I am. I'm not a care in the world. Walks out. And he's like, come with me. And I walk out. And I see his, his boss or the other officer. I, I, I can remember if they were the same rank or not, but he's just sitting there holding in his laugh. So so hard and I'm like what is going on and he picks it up and he's like what is this and immediately I recognize it I'm like what do you think it is and he's like a oh, bomb I'm like dude it's not. Here, I'll show it. what I should have just said what it was like right off the bat I should have just said hey this is a thing no I was I started fucking with it I'm like well here let me show you and he hands it to me and starts backing off and I unscrew the other end and I go like this I'm like it ain't that kind of bomb. <laughs> it's a bomb, but it's not a bomb. <laughs> he just starts like laughing his ass off. The other guy is just like so embarrassed. He like I put it back together. I hand it to him. He like <laughs> doesn't want to touch it. <laughs> and I go back in and to tell you, but I made sure to say it loud enough what happened. And then like he thought my flash. <laughs> I'm gonna say flashlight. <laughs> he thought my flashlight was a bomb. <laughs> uh, that was good. Uh, that was that was like the dumbest thing I think that whole out of that whole trip. It was so funny. Um, so uh, the second time that we went through, like this one, to this day, I still don't understand the common sense behind the person, right? Because we didn't have medical. Mm -hmm. Canada denied us for not having medical the second time. We had four grand on hand access to to more money if we needed it we were going to be two hours away from the border and this person is like what if what if this what if that what if this you know what if what if this happens you don't have medical in canada like you can't let you in i'm like we're two hours from the border if something happens we just come back across the border <laughs> like, and like also you know canada has hospitals like 
and they're not as expensive. Exactly. I think. Like, I'm, was... not, I'm not sure on that. It was ridiculous. They gave us a red flag, and I think we can now take it to court. Um, but it's going to be like six, seven hundred dollars or something like that. But uh, we we have a red flag in our account, so every time I go to travel outside the United States, I got to sit in an interrogation room, and most likely get the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, well, I did some research afterwards, and we have to have medical insurance we have to have ties to the u.s we have to have at least four grand in assets and then we can go through but we have to prove that when we go through um but i have yeah. no plans on on traveling to canada anytime soon and if no, i do but... i'm gonna go prepared <laughs> i was i was laying in bed the other day and i was like man i want a trip first off i have no idea where my passport is i moved into my new place and i lost my passport but nice um I'm sitting there like, man, I want to go to Greece. I want to, yeah, I'm going to go to Greece. And then immediately the thought process goes, damn, I got to sit in the airport for like four hours just in case. <laughs> you know? <laughs> ah. Go a day early. We already know how yeah. to, how to <laughs> live on a small bed. So, uh. um, so that, that's the Canada story. And I'm sure in future podcasts, we'll talk more about it and more about the shenanigans that was STDX. Um, oh yeah, there's so much. But let's talk about you. Let's. Let, why did you want to become a content creator? What What made you start? I want to say it's more of like a hobby. Um, originally, I was sitting down and I was gaming out. Um, and there's the, there's a little more of an in depth background to it, but it kind of touches into more of a personal personal side of things. It was kind of like my um, things things that happened to fall through with something and i just kind of picked it up as like all right well i've already dedicated my time and stuff to this so i'm going to transition to this and i'm going to make something out of it um but yeah for the most part it was just sitting down gaming out and going like i i could be making money doing this. i could i could be bringing laughs i could bring my personality to things and there, there were times where, like, I wanted to take it professional, but at the same time, like, I've kind of treated it more like a hobby. It's something to do outside of work. Like, I'm not too crazy on socializing. Like, I get off work, and, you know, I go out, party, all that stuff. I don't really do that. So, it's like the family is, is in the in the online environment. And one re or one way to bring in another community is through, like, streaming and content creation. So. That's, that's probably what got me into content creation it was it was the community and like the family that gets involved with that yeah yeah and i mean we've and the shenanigans that ensue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, i mean also being able to highlight all the crazy crap you know <laughs> be like yeah yeah i did that in this game yeah, this is the clip this is the clip yep yeah. yep yeah <laughs> I need to really figure out a good system to clip because going back afterwards and trying to find your clips is no, too much. So work. one one thing I was doing for a while there is I keep like a notepad mm -hmm. uh, on on the side, and when you when you hit something nutty, if no one's in the system to clip it, you just write down you know like this day, and then you put the the hour and minute, and then you can go back and you can clip it yourself or or like. I think Twitch's clip system, its organization is crap. <laughs> I had to go through like, and delete I, a bunch of clips. <laughs> uh, it's, it's organization, and I'm hoping this whole uproar with the DMCA stuff on, on the, the clip system allows Twitch to go in and, and, and advance and change up the system because it is, it, like, if you've been streaming for three, four years, good luck finding a specific clip because that ain't happening. It's pages on pages. I think it's yeah. organized by date. And then... It's you can you can do date and then you can do view count, but there's no like specific. There there is a way to view specific games, but there's no way to like search for a specific title. Like that that should be a thing. I just realized we went about fourteen minutes into this podcast and we haven't said what you do. What do you do? <laughs> what do I do for work? <laughs> what do you do for like? What's your content? <laughs> Oh, my content, it's all over the place. Uh, I used to be big into GBs for Call of Duty. Uh, ranked out single digits in uh, GBs and all that stuff. Um, near the tail end of Infinite, or like uh, Advanced Warfare. No, it was... It's been so long. It was Infinite Warfare. On the tail end of Infinite Warfare, I kind of dropped off. 
and I, I transitioned over to what has consumed my life for the last three, four years, which is Rocket League. And Rocket League is just... Mm. <laughs> What's oh. funny is I actually started watching Rocket League videos. I don't play the game, but I actually started watching. Uh, I, me I remember I watched the video where they did the long world record longest game. 11 days. Or 11 hours. 11, 11 hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. And it's like yeah. someone else already beat it, but like that w it was streamed and it became a charity stream. It was it was such a cool, like Rocket League is such a cool community. I'm, I'm just, I, I played Rocket League once. I think it's a good game. It's just not for me because it, it requires a brain and i don't have one. <laughs> it, it requires what i like about rocket league is like if you lose you lose like you you were put in your place like you aren't it's so skill-based and there's no rng aspect like i can't just huck a nade and hope for the best right mm -hmm. like like in rocket league it's so skill and mechanical and physics and like everything like you are your own weakness in rocket league it's not because of this. It's not because of that. It, like, yes, there's times where the servers are a little, eh, because they don't have central servers. Why? I don't know. But uh, just in general, like, you know, playing it and, and watching it and, and being a part of it, like, it's, it's super skill-based. And it requires you to sit down and put the effort into training and put the effort into, like, changing up your play style and adapting. I just, I like love it, man like real soccer almost or mm -hmm. real sports um so who i guess we could say rocket league was one of your your big pushes and i mean i've seen you playing a lot of rocket league late, lately and you're playing a tournament later today right yeah yeah um so uh recently hit gc finally you know which is the highest rank in rocket league i still got like got thousands more hours before i can make it anywhere close to the top but <laughs> Uh, finally hit the highest rank two days ago. Um, and then me and my buddy Don have been partaking in a 2v2 league. Um, it was kind of just spur of the moment. We're like, yeah, you know what? Let's join this league. Let's see what happens. We're going to the championship, baby. <laughs> <We're> going... <laughs> uh, which is, which is tonight. It'll, um, you better it'll be win. tonight. You better uh, win. We're it's hoping not, oh, we're going to put in the title championship winning rocket league or <laughs> we're going against the only team to defeat us during the normal season so oh it's a big match it's a big match so it's it's gonna be fun um but yeah if we if we pull the w that that's just like yeah i decided to join a league and pulled off a championship you know how much is winnings uh the winning i'm not sure i haven't looked at any because it was just the hop in for the spur of the moment kind of thing it's IGL, so I don't think it's like a crazy amount, but the community is so massive, so. So it it, it brings your name and your stream out there. I, it'll bring a name out there, yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be all over the the uh, profile page. I'll be able to like link over. Um, in fact, we had posted that we were making it to the semifinals at that time, and like the owner of IGL was posting like, "Yeah, congrats, you know, good luck." Um, cool. so yeah. <laughs> Wow, they're rock on. man, Rocket League is such like a, a welcoming community. That's crazy. That's it crazy. is, it is. Uh, and then I'm a part of two other leagues. One league just ended, uh, which is like a newer league, which is NRLA. And then I'm also in a le bigger league, which is called United Rogue. Uh, for anyone that wants to like get better at Rocket League, I, I would suggest getting into a league. Like it, it goes from intermediate to high end advanced players. Like they, they group you up and they allow you to advance and grow with a team uh, competing week to week, which is, which is beautiful. That's cool. So. That's really cool. That certain games, <clears throat> Call of Duty needs to, you know, do something. Like that. <laughs> um, so, did you have any inspirations when it came to content creation or getting this competitive into re? League. <laughs> League. uh inspiration wise i it's always kind of been like a hobby there's always there's like the select few streamers and like the community that brings in uh and like set to destroy x for example back in the good old days of set to destroy x um there was a lot of inspiration around it because we were we were bringing in like what are now pro players and all that. I, I don't know if you've heard of the, you've probably heard the name. Doug is raw. Mm -hmm. He used to be a part of set to destroy X. Oh, um, wait, 
Was he was a part four? in the Blops three days, I want to say. Uh, royalty was was part of Set to Destroy X. Now he's a pro player. Um, there's there's a bunch of people and a couple streamers too that like brought in through Set to Destroy X. You kind of met with them, you know. You got you got familiar with them kind of created the community with them and then you watch them advance and grow and it, it, I, I would say that part is the inspiration like that the, always that idea that i can stream tomorrow and then out of nowhere just boom right um rocket league per se i don't, it's just it's just a passion dude like i like i said i, I feed on the idea of establishing dominance right like you go into a game that's all you want to do is establish dominance so when it comes to rocket league it's just that feel that adrenaline rush of just like yeah <laughs> i won <laughs> exactly i did this crazy mechanical thing that like not many people can do in your face <laughs> you <know? laughs> Uh, I think my favorite part is when you score a goal and it just knocks everyone back. And I think that's just like the biggest F you. <laughs> um, recently, the big meta is is getting people to bite. And I have a couple a couple of good images of that. Like uh, going up and you, you're like charging straight at the ball. Guys coming in from a 90 degree angle to contest. And you just slam your brakes right before you hit the ball. And you just watch them flip just straight across. <laughs> hit nothing. And then you just drive it in. <laughs> Oh, that's oh it's so fun. Oh, so it's weird. so fun. Um, so you, there's that, a your passion for Rocket League would be your motivation to keep going, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's uh, like... They they found this new mechanic. It was probably like I want to. It's it's always it's been around for like a year to two years because they released an update and they decided to make it to where like if you leave a surface without jumping, you retain your your flip. So things like ceiling shots became a thing where I would drop like three quarters of the way down and then I was able to flip. Because normally you jump, you have 1.3 seconds to initiate the next jump. Otherwise you lose your jump entirely. But people had found a way that when you make contact with the ball with all four tires, you get your flip back. You, the ball is acting as a ground. So you're leaving ground and and you theoretically have your, your flip back an infinite flip. So there's this new thing called a, a, a flip reset and when that started coming out like it's all i practiced <laughs> i don't want to so like it, can, it's embarrassing you can, you but flip the, keep flipping the ball through the air and just bring it to the to the goal basically exactly exactly there there are people that are skilled enough and controlled enough to where they can just chain chain reset on on the ball and just carry it across field and it's it's so crazy that's rude <laughs> but it, it's such a it's such a like crazy mechanic because like you, your your idea of normal physics right is like the ball's dropping the guy just jumped he doesn't have his flip anymore so it's going to be a, a straight on attack but like he can caress the ball and then just immediately flick again and this the ball just power shots anywhere um so that's that's this a neat is, one this is why i'm not gonna play that game i, I'm more <laughs> like, I don't even know how i would um, uh so Who's your biggest supporter in your endeavors? In my endeavors? In like streaming and competitive Rocket League. Is it just yourself? Do you have people like cheering you on? I again I would have to I'd have to go back to the community. I'd like um it it's definitely definitely the community. And it's just always always passion driven. Okay. Yeah. I mean that that's honestly some some great support is just looking to the people who come in and be like we love watching you. It's always a great feeling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how long have you have you been doing this? You've been doing this what six, seven years? A very long time. <laughs> uh, Twenty thirteen, I think. So yeah, seven years. Uh, I was under a different Twitch account, and I'd made the swap probably like four or five years ago. And is it as rewarding as you thought it would be? Like seven years ago, did you think you'd be doing what you're doing now? Seven years ago, if you were to tell me I'm still doing it seven years ago for like a hobby base, I probably would be like, no, nah, no, nah, I would have been big by now. <laughs> you know, like, uh, so in, in hindsight, like I came in expecting to grow, but like at the same time, I've kind of adapted it more of like a hobby. So it, it, it's hard to say, because if, if I were to look it back 
and say like I'm here where I'm at seven years from now, I think I'd still be satisfied because there's still that small community. Like it's just, it, it just ultimately always goes back to that. Always. Um, I'm thinking about my chat right now. I'm just like, they're probably like, hey, asshole, you haven't streamed in a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And I, I think that's the big thing that's like pushed me away because that's, that's a big, big part of becoming professional is like this constant scheduled screaming or streaming. But at the same time, like I've always been, and I do this with coding and, and like all that stuff. Like a big part of me loves that. I love streaming and I love coding, but the idea of scheduling it and, and making it a continuous work habit just kind of turns me off from it because I, I don't want to turn my passion into work because I'm scared that I would lose passion. Right. Right. So, so you just kind of let go with the flow and just keep doing what you yeah. love. You mentioned yeah. coding. You you do coding now as a job? I, know you um, I did I did a little bit of coding in high school and I've touched base with it and let it grow for a little bit, but I do a little bit of game design and coding. Yeah. Nothing nothing crazy, but like just just simplistic coding through like Unity or Unreal. Could you, could you teach me? I've been trying to learn coding. I can't I can't sit there and watch any videos. I'm sorry. I need someone. Uh, so the best way to do it is YouTube videos. <laughs> Cause I'm I'm at a level where it's like floppy code. Like I can get the job done, but it's it's semi sloppy. Like instead of condensing like a hundred and twenty to a hundred or like a thousand lines of code down to like five hundred. Like um it's it's very sloppy. So it's it's touch base here and there. I'm going to still push you to at least teach me a few things to where I can get started because I'm still looking at it like I have no idea what I'm doing. You start with the uh, hello world, <laughs> but it, uh, it all, it also starts with, uh, like what, what coding language you're programming in. Cause I did C plus plus back in high school. And then I transitioned to the more unified one, which is uh, C sharp. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. I, I'm trying to go for, um, full stack web design. That's what I want to do. Web design. So you're looking at like HTML and and all that other stuff. Yeah, like I got the hang of HTML a little CSS. bit. CSS. Like, it's just, yeah, it's just, and then it started doing other languages and then I just kind of got frustrated. And then, I don't know, some YouTube videos are just very confusing. Uh, anyway. If, if, if you've ever heard of the website Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, um, it's a really good place to go to, to like a very affordable training, I guess. Like they, they run like essentially courses and, and you download these courses, you go through it, and and advance with them. Okay. I'm going to check into that, because I've definitely realized, like, career-wise, I know what I want to do. And if I have, if I can't do content creation full-time, I want to I code, because <laughs> it's just... I Coding is fun, man. I, I, used to, I used to thought I hated it, but I think it was just more I was scared of it. And then, yeah, like, you, that is definitely the case. Like, you look, you look at coding, and you go, like, how? What? But like, it's yeah. super easy to get into once you get past that first bump. And then it's just all downhill from there. Well, in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a snow I'm trying to make the snowball analogy, all right? <laughs> so my, my big thing with it, though, is like the big passion around coding is you can, you, you can't, like, as a human, you can't be God. But like in coding, you can be God. You can literally create whatever you want and it's at your fingertips that's so cool yeah one of the projects I, I wanted to learn and do is create a streaming service like obs just less confusing a little more mm -hmm. user friendly like i love obs I, i've tried obs twitch studio switch Studio is another great one that is really good for people who are just getting into it because it's not confusing but i just wanted to make one that's a little yeah i don't know i, just, I see things i'm like i could do this better and then mm -hmm. Um, well, t going back to Rocket League, what was like some of the biggest? Because I mean, you're you're competitive. You're pretty much a professional, pretty much, right? You're in, you, you're <laughs> in the ranks. You're you're pushing. You have the passion for it. You know, you're about to win a big tournament. Okay, so I'm saying you're going to win. Period. Uh, I'm not taking no for an answer. So <laughs> what are and you can include streaming in this too. But what are some like the drawbacks? Like where you sat there and you're like, fuck, and you ran into an issue or something like that. And how'd you overcome it? It's, it stems back to the skill base. So like when new mechanics come out, if you want to partake in the higher level of gameplay, 
like yes you don't necessarily need to know how to do the mechanic but you have to understand the mechanics so like when the flip reset came out like out of nowhere people were flipping past their timer in the middle of the field like what is going on <laughs> like what like you can't read you have to adapt to this stuff um the game is always progressing faster so there's this new technique called a speed flip which is like a diet like you can flip cancel in the game and it's a diagonal flip cancel which is super super mechanical like to, to cancel a diagonal and then it just allows you on like kickoffs to get to the ball first and people have gotten so well at that that they can hit it and just strike it straight in the net and like ones and and twos so you have to learn those mechanics and how to counter them um i think the biggest drawback outside of that is the ranking system right now um because like like i said i had just hit gc which is the equivalent of 1500 MMR. There's there's a breakdown of 100 MMR per rank. Uh, generally speaking, it's about 100. Um, but there are people at this level that have surpassed GC and are up in like the 1900. So it's a 400 MMR difference. And at the end of the season, there's a soft reset. And the issue is, is those 1900s and 2000s and plus and even 17s, 18s, all that stuff, they get reset down to 1350 or 1450. Um, so it just compiles this massive group of players down to the same rank, even though there is no, like there's a massive skill gap. And it because of the way they have their system, there's no reason for those 1900s, 2000s to try to push past again. Like there's there's no achievement at the end of 1900 there's no reward past 1500 so they begin to just kind of stay back in the 15 1600 range and just style on us just absolutely style on us so there's there's that big issue in the rank system right now and what about streaming when it came to like you know obviously for you it's a hobby and you just do it because you love it but are there anything when you were creating your community or building up stream is there anything that set you back any um you know, besides getting kicked out of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I would say as, as like a streamer in Rocket League, it's kind of like everything else. You either have to bring content or you have to be extremely gifted at the game. Because um, people don't really tune in. Like if you're a diamond or a gold or a silver, people don't really want to tune in unless you're bringing like comedy to, to what you're doing. Um, and... And streaming wise, like the the community itself in Rocket League has simmered down a lot. Like there used to be a lot of times where you'd have to turn off chat because people are just being super vulgar. That's kind of died down. Um realistically, the community in Rocket League, like it has so much potential to go forward and rivaling with the content creators that are now uh available, like it it's a small player base, like it's a small community. So like, it's not like COD where it's so big that like, it's almost like a, a half of a percentage to make it to the top or like be a part of that streaming community. With Rocket League, it's so condensed and small that you have that opportunity to flip a switch, put in the work, put in the effort and become part of that community that sits at the top for community creation and, and streaming and YouTube. So. It's like in Call of Duty and other big games, some, a lot of the top streamers don't know who the other who the you know, other people are mm -hmm. because there's so many and then with Rocket League like I said it's, it's a bit of a smaller base so if you said if like a Rocket League player who's you know has the same passion as you do would you suggest that they stream? Oh absolutely I, I suggest that anyone that sits at home games out for you know even four three hours right like if you if you stream three four hours or if you game out three to four hours a your day stream the worst thing that'll come out of that is really nothing like you're, right. you're you're putting in the effort to stream and you have the you have the potential to create another career path you have the potential to create another revenue you have a potential to create another just community-based thing it allows you to say that you put those three to four hours a day like because everyone goes ah oh, get off your games you know all you do is game all day but when you put streaming and content creation behind it, you, you literally turn it into a passion. Like it is a, a respectable passion in, in the community. So. 
So bouncing off of that, what would at what moment would you say you could do this full time? Uh, you need to be able to. I want to say if you can turn in almost eighty percent of what you make as like a, a standard living job. So I'm talking fifteen to eighteen dollars an hour. Um, I would say anywhere in the range of making twenty five hundred to even maybe low two thousand, depending on where you're living at. Once you start seeing that consistent revenue, I would go full time. And what about um, for you? What, what is something that you would want to do? For, would you want to become like a professional, like on a team competing in the big? Tournament? Oh, absolutely. And I, and I always joke around, right? Because everyone in that like professional scene is like sixteen to like early 20s and i'm sitting here going on 25 26 i don't even remember but i'm like if i could do that yeah oh, oh yeah yeah yeah, oh, you, you yeah. Would be the, the weird uncle <laughs> you bet i'd be on that field cussing out a 16 year old and putting them in his place <laughs> i would i would expect the same back if i got styled on by the 16 year old i expect him to be in my face flaunting his shit like it's just it's respect man it's, it's, uh, it's all good answer. You know, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you could go back seven years and start over, though, well, would you do anything different? I think I would have put a lot less effort into Call of Duty. Uh, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot more personal things that would have changed that probably would have stemmed me away from the whole gaming community. But um, in general, like if I was to focus on gaming and streaming, if I were to go back seven years... I would sit my, my little tushy down. I go, listen, all right? Strive for excellence and stay focused. Here's SARP, which is the prequel of Rocket League. Hey, grind it. <laughs> Transition into Rocket League. Create content. Become big. <laughs> like, Just like, because I look at it right now, because the where GCs are right now, it's the, it's the 1% of the player base. Like uh, it's nearing two percent, but it's it's the one percent of the the player base. Where I'm playing at, like the the style I'm playing at, at the level I'm playing at, would have been considered a professional level two years ago, two and a half years ago. You know, you know some might even beg to differ, like a year ago, year and a half ago. It's because the game advances that quickly, like it just grows that quickly. It's kind of like, um, um, what game is it? C not CSGO. Oh, it was a game I was playing. Um, R6. Rainbow. R6, yep. Yeah. Like, the way that I play nowadays, like, I haven't even touched Rainbow in a while, but, like, the way I used to play was considered professional during season one and two. Like, mm -hmm. You know, and then the, the skill gap was... I, I can't even... When I watch videos of professionals playing Rocket League, Siege... CSGO, I'm like, I don't even, I can't imagine what's going through their head because it's so milliseconds. Everything is milliseconds. You're peeking mm -hmm. through a tiny little asshole where you, on my screen it wouldn't even really render because I have a big old TV. And then you see a tiny little shadow move for less than a millisecond and bam, they're dead. I'm just like, yeah. And so, uh, uh, like, dude, like, they're just I, everywhere. I think if I can go back seven years, the big focus would be I want to be a founding father of something involved in Rocket League. Because when you find new mechanics, they name it after you. There's like the musty flick, the breezy flick, the, all this stuff. There's like, I would love, first off, go back, change my name. Because Covius, 20 times better than Crypto. <laughs> also <laughs> but copyright <it'd> be, issues. <laughs> it, it's so... Like jaw dropping. Imagine being on the field and being like, "Oh man, he just hit like a, a Kobe's flick." That would be so cool. I'm a part of the community. Like, the, I, I think that's the big, the big thing with Rocket League and, and striving forward is just trying to create a name for yourself in in that small community. So, given that, where do you see yourself in five years, and where would you want to be in five years? Um, hopefully, Rocket League drops Rocket League two. Uh, Upgrade your engine to Unreal 5. Get away from Unreal Engine 3, please. Um, <laughs> uh, but 
in five years, if Rocket League is still around, which it definitely has the potential, there's a little little banter and like some some issues going on on the Psionics, the developer side of things. They're very small and they're trying to compete with this ever growing game. Five years, I would like I would like to be in a position where where I have a name for myself in Rocket League. Um, if if not, I would like to be able to compete at that tier if not at the tier of competitive but like a tier under that um i want to be a big reason why people join on rocket league like it's it's such a good game dude it's it's such a i don't, I don't know like it, it's i was telling someone yesterday i was like it's love it's life the moment you hit that first adrenaline rush in rocket league you're hooked done you will constantly strive you will constantly strive to grind it and grind it and grind it and grind it. And it's just a game to always have in your back pocket. Something you can always go back to. Yeah, like me and Real Morale. Even mm -hmm. after my account sort of got banned, I still play it. I didn't get banned for reasons. Was, I was trying to link my PlayStation to my Steam and it caused some sort of issue and now I can't link them. Um, Nintendo banned my account. I'm dealing with that. Why did a Pokemon they... DLC drops in, in three days. You, you want to tell the audience why you got <laughs> I bought a game from a third-party website and got the code. Xenoblade, whatever, Chronicles, yada yada, right? I, I just wanted to play it. It was a $60 game, got it for $40 through a third party supposed to be a high-end third party i got i got protection on the game everything and the person who originally bought the code did a charge back to nintendo well that code was traced to my switch and then nintendo's like oh well this is fraudulent like you stole this code and i was like no no i didn't <laughs> i bought this from a third party website the thing is is it was three months after the fact that he did the charge back and it's just, it, it was a crazy situation because I logged in the other night and I was like, your, your account has been suspended due to violations of user agreement code. I was like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything. I may have talked about jailbreaking it, but like, the microphone picked this up? <laughs> no. Are you listening? Are you Google? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's, that's an end progress. Um, I had to prove that uh, I bought the game through the website. I had to prove that they were doing a chargeback, that they tried to reach out to Merchant. All that got sent over to Nintendo. And then Nintendo was like, it might take 30 days to review this. I'm like, DLC in three days. <laughs> like, Don't torture I'm going to have to jailbreak your system to transfer my save file to a different account. Like, listen, do you want me to do the right thing? Or do you want me to go behind your system and do something that should get me banned? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, all right, so we reviewed your account and we forgive you for the code, but you're so bad because <laughs> you jump broke our system. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're super paranoid in that. I, and I guess I understand why, but like, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I think if it's... it has no effect in the online side of things and if I'm not like fraudulently doing things with it, I feel like it should be freedom of the user. Yeah, I, I think it's their culture, though. I, I mean, in mm -hmm. Japan, it's a little bit different the way they think about that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, it's, I think, I, I could totally be wrong here, but I think it's like if you make something, like, say, for example, you made a tool and you sold that, that's still technically kind of your tool in their in their culture, which makes sense. I mean, you, you put a lot of effort into it, so you still kind of have control over it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, no, Nintendo's very, very strict about things, but, I mean, they make amazing games. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I was playing Zelda Breath of the Wild on Pixie Switch. Um, and that game, I've never played a Zelda game before that. And that was my first. In, I mean, okay. I've seen gameplays and I watched it. I knew about the lore and everything. I just never picked one up. I think I've, I had a Game Boy and I played like part of the first level and then never touched it again because I was, I was like mm -hmm. four years old. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I played Pokemon. Um, but yeah, that game was just so. It's just like so in so much detail it's ridiculous it's like it's mm -hmm. mind blowing um and so many I, I could go on for days about the game that game's great i need to play that again 
Um, uh, if you've never touched Zelda, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I recommend Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. Pixie says I, but it, it's the big thing that made Zelda the game it is. So yeah, I, I don't think I want to play through, but it looks really cool. Um, oh yeah, no, there's so much. There's so much detail. So many like, just so much behind the scenes work into the game that was considered classic. Like you wouldn't expect to see this much in a game, and they did it. So they bust their asses. That's for damn. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh yeah. If someone were to come up to you and ask you, "Hey, I want to get into Rocket League slash streaming. I've never done either before. What is your biggest advice for them? If you had to give them in like a you know a paragraph of like here, here's what you're gonna do. Or here's Oof, what you're gonna do. A, 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 a paragraph. Hey, well, however long you want. <laughs> I'm just. Don't limit um, honestly, anyone that tries to get around Rocket League, have fun with it. Just, just have fun with it. At the beginning, you are going to be trash. Okay? It's going to happen. You're going to be trash for weeks to months. But you decide to put in that effort to, to evolve and adapt the current meta and like the mechanics and all that stuff you're willing to put in that training and effort the game is never ending there's 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 no cap there's no cap to skill like it's 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 infinite it's like it's legitimately infinite um scary to think about <laughs> It is because, like I said, like two, two, three years ago, like the play style I'm playing at, it would be considered professional. Um, and the MMR difference, like people were hitting 1,200 MMR. Now people are doubling that. And and there's there's you know on record people hitting like 25, 2600, 2700 MMR in competitive. And it just as a, as a game developer or as a game studio and you say 1500 is going to be our max rank like this is the suspected potential maximum that people could reach and people are blowing it out of the water never tell the internet they can't do something because they'll go and break shit. <laughs> truth like, like i said it's gotten to the point where it's so bad that all these player bases that are so far more advanced than the highest level possible are being reset at the same range and and then it's just a clusterfuck. It's a, uh, you don't you don't play ranked at the beginning of the season. Let's just say that. So what about streaming? Yeah. Would you like have any advice for streaming or content? Just creation? get into it. Just get into it. Have fun with it. Uh, don't don't take things too seriously off the rip. Um, and and from the beginning, like just even if you have zero viewers to one viewer, you know, just keep going, keep going, and keep going. On a side note, if you are streaming, you should always have a tab for yourself up. If you have your phone, a laptop, or a computer, you should always pop a tab on one of those and just generate, you know, that extra two, three views for yourself. So it'll give you a nice little head start in the advantage. Um, but just in general, have fun with it. Absolutely. Have fun with it. Good advice. Good advice. Just have fun. Don't. Don't do it for the fame because fame takes work. Every big streamer has been doing it for a while. Ninja has been doing it for years, and he only recently blew up to the level that he's at. It um, when you when you sit down and you tell yourself, "I want to become professional. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to achieve this." You're putting in in realistic terms unrealistic goals. Like it's. The percentage of chance of people that that make it to the big timers is so minimum that like it should always be a back thought it shouldn't be an objective your objective should be based on how do i express myself how do i get across you know and, and literally just have fun with it <laughs> it's just going back just have fun with it if you blow up you blow up but the biggest takeaway will always be the community that you bring in this like it, it's nothing compares. Good shit. Good shit. Now, I do have a question here. If you weren't playing Rocket League, and if you weren't streaming, if you're just regular old grocery store brand Joe, what would you be doing? Um, I don't like probably it. either striving to 
probably striving to increase my coding and, and getting more into the game design aspect of things. And if I wasn't game driven at all, I'd be pursuing my career at robotic engineering. So. Cool. And can you build me a robot that wakes me up in the mornings? I, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> like that, those would probably be my two, my two things I'd be going at. I was learning other languages. That's always been like a side passion, but there's too much going on in the day that I, I just don't have the time. <laughs> I just have the time. Dude, for real, like, I end up trying to pack my day so full of things because right now I'm out of work temporarily, and I'm like, I gotta take up this time. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. Um, and I end up packing my day so full of things, my schedule so full of things, I end up not doing anything because I get overwhelmed. So mm -hmm. if... if for the viewer out there, if you plan on making a schedule, first schedule non-stream or non-game related things. Schedule your life, and then throw in you know your your stream or your grind time because that is at first is going to be a hobby or just you know something to do in your quote free time. So schedule that first, then everything else. Because I'm supposed to be uploading four YouTube videos a month, and I'm two weeks behind because I have just. I, I always just make the thumbnails and I haven't gone around to it yet. <laughs> and then I, that's a, that's a big draw too. Like they, that is something to mention. Like don't let streaming, don't let anything consume your life. Yeah, because you'll end up you'll end up video. going to Canada and getting denied. <laughs> <laughs> you'll end up joining an organization that was sponsored by a cream we got sponsored by some doctor with a special cream what oh it was there, were, there we were sponsored by condoms before before i had joined oh yeah there was STDX <laughs> there were durex condoms there were also stdx panties i'm sorry but if i'm going down on a lady and i see stdx written above everything i'm going i'm gone <laughs> i don't know what was going through their heads uh, what i mean that is literally take every chance you can kind of mentality just just go make your, make a name yeah yeah and i mean they ended up changing their name anyways and oh god it was, that was a mess uh, i'm kind of glad i got out when i did because i didn't want to go through any of that again yeah um, i i'd say i'm glad that i separated from it everyone like the reason i left was literally everyone that i was the oldest member <laughs> like i'm a i'm a 22 23 year old at the time and i'm like dude like there's no i was 20 21 20 mm -hmm. and i was just like there's no one i know anymore yeah like everyone's gone yeah oh i mean i i remember texting charles and just saying i i just can't do this right now because of the situation and then i think he sent me one text after that and that was it i i, I mean, pulled him in and asked him why i'd been stuck around and he, he said you know what man it's just nostalgia at this point and i'm like all right well to me, I've lost that nostalgia feel. There's, there's no one, there's yeah. no one here that I know. So. And I mean, they've created an amazing brand afterwards. It was just, it's mm -hmm. very. I, I don't, I don't like to, you know, think that he had bad intentions. I think it was just he got caught up in everything, and then it just bit him in the ass. But he created something amazing. I mean, Lazarus is an amazing brand. I, I still follow them and and watch their stuff. It's a great brand. It was just uh, the, what was it? The shit, sh the shit show before the storm. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was much. It was definitely much. Um, you still keep up with the rest of the guys? Um, so morph. Um, I I used to live with right. Um, I moved in with him, all that stuff. Ben, I still keep up with Ben from time to time. Uh, Mitch, which is uh, STBX Viscosity, still super close with him. He still chills in the Discord. Um, I ran into Luco, which is a guy that plays with Rake and Ben, and he joined the same Rocket League league as me. <laughs> and he Good was best. he was like, "Oh man, send him to Azkaban." And I was like, "Hey, this isn't Rake's server." And he goes, "Wait, how how do you know Rake?" I'm like, "You know Rake." <laughs> So yeah, there is that conversation. Um, outside of that, I really don't think I keep up with many people. Uh, Draconis still swings by every great once in a while. 
Um, you know, I've I've talked with uh, Texas Yoshi uh, a couple times, and he keeps tabs on like shuffles and dangles and all those. Like those those are people probably before your time, but yeah, I, I mean they're that that small little community base that was always around me when I joined is still kind of there. So yeah, I, I mean I keep up with Dreamer um, mm -hmm. and a couple of the other guys, but. We uh, had a, another failed org together. Um, I brought. I was gonna bring them in, and then the org just caught fire and erupted. Um, so I feel really bad about that. But because I had built that thing, like I got brought on, I built it up, I got everything prepared, and then just when we were about to like really launch it, like full launch of the organization, uh, it went up in flames. Speak, speaking of Dreamer, uh, shout out to Dreamer. He uh, he did my whole redesign. Oh yeah, my whole redesign. If anyone... I did a little bit of the intermissions and stuff like that, but like overall, he did absolutely amazing with my redesign. I'm gonna and, link him down and... in the description, and he's great. I mean, he has stuff on Streamlabs. If you go, oh to yeah, Streamlabs store, like that, a lot of that works is his. Uh, he makes amazing he is stuff. Amazing dude, like. Yeah. The turnaround rate was practically instant and and so friendly to work with like I, I it was a couple weeks ago or like a month or two ago where i was like ah man i, I got this new thing for like channel points can you create this real quick or like with rocket league like it's showing the controller on screen the overlay for the controller is like hey man can you take this concept and can you add in like the background of, of the starting screen to this and he's like yeah sure thing sure thing like he's amazing he's an amazing person to work with and his content is beautiful and and just doesn't disappoint mm -hmm. he, he created this this brand for myself and or like this idea concept and he made it possible so. yeah I, i'm gonna i'm probably gonna hire him to redo all my graphics because right now i'm just using a preset and then this I, you can't really see it but i'll, I'll show you after stream this i just built myself um Dude, yeah, it's such it's it's crazy too because like there's so many people that I will run into online, and I'm like, man, I remember you from years ago. Like it's weird, it's small world almost. Mm -hmm. Like there's two people on on Twitter, and I saw them talking to. Them. I'm like, you two know each other because I knew them separately. And then like, yeah, we were in the same work together. I'm like, I'm mad. I don't keep up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> I mean, there were there were moments where I just like I was off the internet for a good while. I just I just took breaks, and that's kind of my biggest regret overall is taking a break. Yeah, it's like, needed from time to time, though, man. It's it's definitely needed. Yeah, but like in small quantities, multiple small. Quantities, yeah, oh yeah. Not like, yep. Yep. You know, don't don't destroy your brand just because you want to take a year off. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> that's the one thing about streaming and and gaming in a professional setting is that it is a constant part of your life because that's why people are there to get to know you and get to know your your life almost um and same thing with gaming if you get off your game for a little bit then next thing you know you come back and it's like oh i i don't know anything anymore um, yeah i don't understand how like some some guys they'll they'll play the game 10 12 hours a day and i'm just like i would no <laughs> <laughs> rock league <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> like, I appreciate the effort. I just uh, don't. Want to, I can't play the same game for that long. Yeah, uh, it's. I, know, I guess that's why I'm a variety streamer. I during during the whole COVID thing, um, I looked at the past past two weeks played, like the time that I put into Rocket League, uh, 140 hours <laughs> in two weeks. I was like, yeah. I, I should probably I should probably take a break. <laughs> let's, let's bring it down to like eighty uh, hours. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's still that's a full time job. <laughs> that's a full time job on the side. That, that's how you know you really love love what you're doing. So that is pretty much me out of questions. Uh, do we have any other stories from from the trip? I'm though? pretty sure we have hours upon hours upon hours of stories that we can go through and we will definitely have to touch base on them definitely have to touch base on them. yeah i'm, I'm doing um, a, a like another series of the podcast where it's more of a round table 
uh, bringing multiple people and we'll talk about like a certain subject. So I'm thinking of maybe bringing in some of the yourself, maybe some other people from the old org and just talking about all the shenanigans that went on. I, th- I think that would be a fun podcast. Well, if you'd like, I can get a hold of the Mitch and, and Morph. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we'll, we'll Which... do it. We'll do it. Um, I'm, if I can keep this momentum up of having guests on and all that, I might turn this into a weekly thing. Um, yeah. Because I have one more person after this that I need to record with. And then I got to start finding other people. Um, I don't know why I'm putting this in the podcast. Hi, guys. Welcome to the inside of what I'm doing. <laughs> Jesus. Um, y'all don't, don't listen to what you do. He swears he's a professional guy. I am a professional, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I remember we made a, the name of the podcast because I made a shirt on my merch store called I'm a Professional, I Swear. And it's a simple text <laughs> with a white background, but it's slightly off center on purpose. And oh like, man perfect i'm a professional I swear. <laughs> like basic font slightly off-centered and as a joke and then i was like what do i name it i was talking to pixie I was like, what do i name this podcast like i had like inside the mind of a creator but i was already taken like a bunch of these names i already taken and then i was just like man what the fuck do i call this i need to call it pro- something professional and then we kind of looked at each other i'm a professional i swear <laughs> podcast. <laughs> it's it's so oh my god or Everything I do is so random. I don't understand how I get, I, how I get by in life. But, um... Clothing... Clothing clo- clo- thoughts. Closing thoughts on where do we people find you? Where do they watch you? Where can they get tips and tricks on Rocket League from you? Uh, your tips and tricks uh, is that it's, it may be out of the question. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're Grandmaster, <laughs> alright? Don't... <laughs> Listen, just teach. just flail at the ball. Eventually, you'll do something. <laughs> um, you you guys can find me basically at everything: Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I don't really post on Instagram. That's like young people thing. I'm not, like, you, you see this? I'm old, right? It's uh, Instagram is. Uh, um, but you can find me twitter youtube instagram and twitch all at covius uh instagram is covius gaming but, eh. no no porn hub account with uh safe for work content no uh, uh, only just, fans uh, account <laughs> <laughs> dude i asked because the first the first episode with admired plague he has a gaming channel on Pornhub. not even joking oh, okay gaming videos on Pornhub, okay. and he's verified there uh, the guy I had on right before this, uh, the second episode about Maj, he he joked about having a uh, OnlyFans where he sells feet pics. I mean, he didn't actually have it, but like now I'm just gonna ask everybody, like, do you have a? <laughs> where you post hey, it? all I'm saying is I found out OnlyFans you can stream, butt naked, and make money. So if you find me on OnlyFans, <laughs> <laughs> look, the webcam pointed down. <laughs> Every time you get a goal. Uh, yeah. Uh, every goal is a blue pill, baby. <laughs> this podcast is never going to get sponsored. <laughs> if you're a potential uh, sponsor out there, I swear we're okay, okay? <laughs> we're, we're fine. Perfectly uh, safe. If you're a condom company, I'm going to have to decline. <laughs> I, I heard he's into flashlights, though. <laughs> Especially ones that look like pipe bombs. <laughs> oh, Lord, oh yeah. man. it's been awesome having you on. Also, guys, make sure to check out all his links down in the description below. Check out the previous episodes as well. Check me out here on twitch.tv forward slash you can always get more about you. Anyways, links down below to all the stuff that we talked about. And until next time, I don't have an outro. Anyways, all right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about your tongue. <laughs> I forgot all about it. Well, I had to do that for the ending. <laughs>